Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, uh, for for joining the call. Um, the reason sure. I, I want to do this is um, as, as I might be away in a couple of days for at least two weeks. And if you want to do stuff that you're not blocked um, because there is there might be a misunderstanding, especially for for the on the client side. Mm -hmm. So um, to give you an idea how it what I did so far, so. At the moment, I'm preparing the release 0 0.70. So there are some some UI changes already, but mm -hmm. but not 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 big ones. More kind of problems I I had when I used the app for the first time. But um, what I also did, I created a um, couple of issues in the BIS desktop repository. Mm -hmm. And do, do you know do you know Senhub? Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of, it's kind of a project management tool that integrates uh, very well uh, with GitHub. And you can install this um, browser plugin. And if you do that, then you have uh, all the issues in swim lanes, like, like a Kanban style. So, and maybe, maybe I can quickly share it so it's easier to understand what I mean. It's like a Trello board for the GitHub, yeah, it's, right? It's like a Trello board, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, do you see yeah, the screen? So yeah, and yeah. if you use this plugin, then um, on the one hand side, you have the separation, these different swim lanes, uh, inbox, discussion, bounties, priorities. Um, and But you also have the prioritization I did myself at the moment. So um, if you filter for for labels uh, GUI, which I did in, the, in that screen, mm -hmm. and you go into discussion, then uh, you see all the issues I, I just wrote down or took from someone else um, yeah. and prioritized them just from my point of view or what I saw thought I should be taking next. <clears throat> so, yeah. um, and now for the transition of the client. So, um, Pedro, as you did already this design um, um, guide or experiment, uh, we could you are working at the moment mainly on the website. Is this correct? And the social yes. media stuff. Yeah, and I, I've, I've been trying to, to take a look at them. Um, I actually wasn't able to, to actually compile the... Go through the whole process of making sure that the, the app compiles correctly. But... I was even hoping to to really just do minor tweaks on the CSS. I don't know the the UI changes you're making are just like CSS level, or you're actually going into the source code and changing the um, I'm gonna call it the markup, but I don't even know if that's the correct term in Java. It's like is it just CSS, or are you actually changing stuff on the Java side for these quick UI changes? Uh, at, at the moment, it's it's um, both. So it, it's it's CSS and Java Java code. I'm, I'm changing. Um, if uh, so, so both of you are able to to build the project uh, from source. Is it correct? Yeah, I managed to do it. Uh, I haven't really I haven't really tried it yet. I hope I can, but I I never I never built a I never built it like this. Yeah. So it should it should be able as a, if you follow the guide that is in the BISC desktop repository mm -hmm. it should be on and and if you have a Mac then it should be quite straightforward so it, there shouldn't be the only thing you have to watch out is uh, the the Java version you are installing so if you have already a uh, version nine or ten installed then you could um, change um, um, the, in the Java home settings. Um, which version um, is used by default. Yeah, that was my issue when I first tried to build it because I had the, the version 10 and then I installed version 8 on top of it, but it never connected to it. So I had to actually disinstall the version 10 and then... Yeah, um, there are two, two ways. Yeah. So either you uninstalled version 10 or you can also um, change, change it in, in the bash profile uh, if you're using regular bash or set set bash file so there are always okay. these kind of bash files where you can set which java version should be the 
the one that mm -hmm. is used by default. Okay. Uh, so that, 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 I guess that's the only, only problem you might run into. Everything else should be quite straightforward. I just sh shared my screen. Um, mm -hmm. um, there's what, what, one of the first things um, I did in the beginning was uh, to extract all the CSS that um, were, were in somewhere in the code and moved it everything into one CSS file. Most of it was there already, but I tried to put everything in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so just a sec. Could you repeat that once once again? I had some audio issues. Yeah, it broke up, I think. Pedro, could you, could you repeat what you just said? I was just asking if uh, in this current version there's only one CSS file where all yes. the styles are compiled. Okay, got yes. it. So there's, there's just one, one CSS file. It's called BISC, BISC CSS. Um, but it, it's not the only file that, that is responsible for the design. So there is a default CSS which is used. It's called Modena CSS, which is also in the project. And there you have the style for all components. And in the BISC CSS, um, just parts of them or some components are overwritten mm -hmm. or adapted uh, to the current style you see in the app. So the most, if, if you want to do bigger changes in, on, on how, for example, the, the buttons are rendered in general, then you can also have a look at in, in the Modena CSS. And if you look for uh, dot button, uh, uh, it's, they have some, some convention in, in JavaFX. So if you, if you have mm -hmm. a, cl a class, a component that is called button, then you, if you use dot button, then you will style all buttons, no matter if, if they have this style applied or not. So it's kind of a default style. Mm -hmm. And you could... Well, as long as... Okay. Yeah. And you could, could have a look in, in this style uh, sheet how, how it is created. For example, um, you have pill buttons and so, so that's, that's, it's quite powerful. So, so when you, yeah. when you make a change to this uh, CSS, then you need to compile and reopen the app and see the effects. Yeah, that, that's a problem. So it's, it's nothing that does Is that the process. Right. Yeah, so there's no easy live reloading. There is a kind of an FX builder, which could be used in an ID, uh, could be used to, to try out styles. So I guess the easiest way would be to, to use the, I, I will have a look if there are some, some, some combination tools available um, where you can experiment with CSS in real time. And then maybe you just need to copy over the, the CSS you just created into the BISC CSS and then do the recompilation and, and to see how it, how, how it will look like in the client itself. So it's not, not such a burdensome process. I haven't tried out if it's possible with Java in, to do this kind of live reload. Uh, I uh, have to have a look if that would be possible as well, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that's easy doable. But that, that uh, could I'm be... not, uh, you're breaking out a little bit. Sorry. So I, what I, I just said is, I'm not 100% sure if it's possible to do kind of a live reloading. Um, can you still hear me? I can hear you. I think oh. you... Okay. Just, okay, so what I just said is I, I'm not 100% sure if, um, if, I'm, if it's possible with Java apps to make it seamless live reloading like, like you might know it from web development yeah. where you can see the changes, you press save and you see it immediately in the browser. I'm not sure if we can have this kind of setup, but I, I can have a look if, if, if there's a possibility, but, but if not, um, I guess the easiest way is um, I, I will have a look on a tool that uses this um, live view builder 
which which interprets um, the CSS in, in real time. You create, for example, a button style or a radio button style, combo box style, where you think, yeah, that, that looks as I want it to have. And then we integrate it into the BIS client and, and recompile it. What, okay. Well, what, um, yeah. my concern is I'm, I'm seeing that it would be like, I'm trying to focus on the website and, and focus on the website and all the other visual materials. Will, even though I would love to try to, to work on the CSS for the, mm. the app itself, for the, the client, I feel like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit of a learning curve for me to mm. actually get into it and then to actually, like, in a timely manner, implement any possible changes. And also just being dependent on the, JavaScript, on the CSS itself without going into the JavaScript and just being able to do style changes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that much of an improvement. So maybe yeah. I was thinking if there was a way to kind of divide and conquer, and um, even though I'm going to definitely still try to compile the app just out of curiosity and just like to see if I can learn it, and maybe yeah. it's much simpler than I expected. If, if we could maybe just, if I could just maybe focus on the UI and like export screens, I think that would be probably be the best use of everyone's time. Yeah. So what uh, there are two two fields where uh, any support is highly appreciated. The one is of course the UI design, the design itself, and also on the UX conceptual side. So um, it, it's it's perfectly fine that. Um, Maybe I or if someone else is joining um, the, the, um, the client team as, uh, as well, that we do the implementation and the CSS changes. I don't think it's, it's such a big deal in the end, mm -hmm. uh, but it will be already a big help if we have um, kind of a finalized layout, um, exactly how we want to have it. And I just then take these this designs and try to make it as, as pixel perfect as possible or as pragmatic as, as needed within the client. So, so you, you guys, you, you don't have to, do, to, to worry too much about programming CSS it, yeah. or Java. It, it, it's nice if you do, but if you if don't, nope, that shouldn't be a, any problem at all. It's something that we can learn uh, along the way, and uh, if we try and compile the app and then go through the CS, CSS, CSS. important thing right now will be for us to decide uh, how do we how do we do the next step between the the layout that Pedro's done and what we have at the moment because. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of changes to go from one to the other. Uh, the app is already, in a way, in a good position. So I don't see many changes coming to the app, in a way, of UI. But how do we do now the next step of starting to redoing screens uh, in, the, in the new style? We do something in the middle where we pick up the, the app as it is at the moment, and then we try to implement a new style, and then at at a later stage, then we do the whole the layout differently, but because it already has the same style, it's just a way of altering the layout in a way. Um, yeah, maybe the best the best approach is just just to like reskin it, not even the same layout and the same building blocks, not adding any. I mean, the 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 two screens I present, they were presenting exactly the same functionality, but. Still, they were changing that upper top bar navigation into a sidebar navigation, which yeah. could be a little bit more complicated to implement. So maybe it's just a matter of exporting new images for the icons, reworking the button style, keeping everything in the same position, just like mm -hmm. removing a little bit of those default gradients and changing, implementing a little bit of color styling. And that may, maybe would be enough to already have a, a big leap make yeah. maybe making it look a little less default yeah well the issue i see is that uh, we have to implement a new a new layout and even though it's just layout changes it will take a lot of dev work to, to implement those changes yeah uh, i agree so 
So, yeah, but, but, but we have what? we have new screens coming, right? We have all these new screens that they are still upcoming and they need changes. And then we need, in a way, to have the, like two different streams of work to the, the new screens coming up. We do that with a new style, and then we need as well a new a stream uh, by side that we are altering the previous the screens already done. Yeah. Or let let's see. I'm not sure if it's if we just change the design, also the, how 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 the a button is represented or a radio box combo box. I don't think that it will be lots of work. To be honest, mm -hmm. I think that 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 is something that should be quite straightforward. If you have a final design, so I I would be very happy to to try this out. Um, for doing these bigger changes this, with this uh, sidebar. Um, might be might be more work, but as a first step, if you say yeah, we, we try to um, re reskin uh, most of the of the main components, and yeah. we start uh, redesigning uh, a couple of of pop-ups which which are uh, on the to-do list, which should be should be uh, changed to improve the usability, yeah. and we we in there we can make already bigger changes anyways. So so I think. That would be a, a good first step for me, and and then I I, I can touch um, with every new feature we implement uh, to to make it more and more consistent with um, what you guys ha have in mind for the final version of the of the client. Yeah, and also so just reiterate, um, also keeping the same basic kind of structure of the of the clients i think you, it's probably also a good idea because i imagine that you've been working incrementally on improving the ui and the ux so changing too much of i think he broke up. yeah just let's wait Can you still hear us, Pedro? I guess not. <laughs> I think his connection dropped. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I think I, we can do that, uh, do that middle step uh, and skin what we have now. Uh, keep in mind uh, what we are going to do in the future and the new design uh, and go okay. from there. Pedro is back, yeah. Sorry, you, you dropped out in the end. Could you repeat what you wanted to say? Uh, and yeah, I was just trying to reiterate what I think was was said. Sorry, I keep breaking out, so breaking off, so I don't know exactly if I understand everything correctly. But I was saying that another reason to keep it to keep the structure basically pretty much the same and just trying to skin what we currently have is yeah. also would also instead of undoing all the work we have done or you guys have done throughout the last couple of years, uh, going through issues and resolving them, we just keep keep those issues resolved and just build on top of that instead of trying to re reinvent the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what I, what would be for me the, the perfect starting point to, to, to start with this uh, reskinning is that uh, I have a visual re representation on a file, how these basic components that are available already in the app, like buttons, radio buttons, combo box and so on, how this should look like in the revamped um, version mm -hmm. and the images can... yeah sorry the the icons you use are are the, the icons uh, what what are the formats yeah. png uh, no um depends uh, most of the icons that you see are you font font way so we use um we embed a font awesome for example mm -hmm. or we have another font for material icons um, so, so we're able to resize them seamlessly. Mm. Font awesome so, is amazing. If we can have so, so we have those. yeah, so we we have we have font awesome icons. We have material uh, design icons, but we also have some icons that are just rendered in um, in two uh, in, in for high density displays, rendered twice the size and normal size. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so we can we can use either way if, if there are some icons which are not supported in the version that of this library we use at the moment we can also just render them manually uh, also for example i'm 
I had just checked uh, with the Fontosum guys because I, I purchased private, uh, uh, this uh, license for Fontosum, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. but uh, you're not allowed to, to integrate the, the font uh, within a public repository, but we, uh, we, can, we are allowed to use rendered pre-rendered versions of the icon. So we can use whatever icons we want to have. And if it's possible, uh, we use the um, font-based uh, icons, or if not, then we just use uh, image-based icons. So it shouldn't be a big... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really like font-based font icons. I'm just worried about the, the, the level of customization they allow, that's all. Yeah, so we, we do have options just to, to use any icons we want. Yeah, it's, it's if, if we think it makes sense. Uh, excuse me, can, can you repeat that? Uh, so we, we can use, uh, of course, we can use also image icons if we think that's a big benefit. It's also not, not a big problem. The only thing that we have to keep in mind, if we use different versions, also sizes of these icons, mm -hmm. it, it will increase the, the size the file size of the app, but the app is anyways already 130 megabytes, so. Yeah, I would imagine that at most we would end up increasing by one megabyte if we, yeah. with all the icons. I'm just, I'm just thinking about like using, using the icons to establish some familiarity with all the, the different services, which also includes a little bit more work every time a new, a new payment service is added. It implies going on and looking for another icon but we can also have a default icon that replaces something if, it's, if, if you just add a new payment service. But I think, I think having the, the little Venmo or the little Zelle icon included there when you're just selecting your payment method, it would help a lot because it just gives a little bit of um, a, a familiarity with other brands that could increase the, um, the usability a lot for new users. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We can we can that do that for sure. So, Sergio, uh, do you think do you think we can? I've 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 uh, went back on Sketch and maybe we can start uh, working together on a Sketch file and. Um, yeah, definitely. Starting designing yeah. each component. I'm I'm already imagining that maybe we can just like take the top bar, take the bottom bar, and just design those in kind of independently and and then just comp them together and see how they look and take it from there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to keep, uh, yeah, the tough part is keeping our files in sync. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe we, we have to have a way of, uh, let's say by the end of the day or end of the week, uh, we put our files in, let's say in a shared folder. Uh, so mm -hmm. everyone can just pick it up and. Uh, yeah. Shared folder or yeah, we could, um, we could also just commit it to the design repository and is it possible to, to, yeah, I guess it will be possible to Sorry. to get with, with sketch. Sorry. Can we have access um, to that repository? So we don't need to fork or anything. Yeah, everyone. So there will be, I guess there will be a, a maintainer. Um, worst case scenario, I'm the maintainer, but um, let, let's talk this through maybe also with Chris, but we will definitely find, find a solution for that so that that uh, making these changes uh, is not uh, such a big deal, especially in the beginning. I see so and uh, the way I think sketch file is a, is a good file to have in GitHub because it manages all the changes. So we, if we ever need to roll back to something, it, it will save uh, the changes there. Yeah, and I think uh, sketch files are also not binary files. Or um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I would not have a look. Okay. Okay. Um, Another thing I, I, I will mention is, uh, since now we have the, the design uh, repository, how are we going to do the work? Because some of the issues are done in the BISC desktop. Are we going to have our own set of tickets that we put in the design? Mm -hmm. And then we have two folders in a way that one is the current version, one is the, the, new, the new version, and do we put work in one folder? and the work for this current version in the other one and keeping all these things in uh, in sync yeah yeah we could we could just uh, link link different kind different issues so let, let's say we have this main issue in the BISC desktop repository and we although if there are different repositories I, th I don't think you can really link it in the interface but just 
paste, maybe we have some checkboxes, kind of design issue, conceptual, and we, we link it in the design project. And then everyone can, can watch the progress there. And as soon as it's ready for implementation, then, then I'll, I or someone else will take this issue and implement it uh, in, the, in the BISC desktop repository. Yeah, because and it would be nice for us to, to set up the issue. For example, for these new uh, screens I was working on yesterday, the one about the sell and, and the buy with the, the calculator, it will be good for us to have uh, our own tracker in the, into the design yeah. where I say, okay, this is ready, and then I'll request it. Then you guys can uh, comment on it. Then when it's everyone's happy, we just push it, it's approved, and then someone from the dev can just go there. We do the, the linking, and then, okay, the design is done. Let's go there, let's see it, and then implement it. And this way, yeah. designers and developers are working together and makes things uh, better. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, are you both already um, in the um, in the BISC uh, as a contributor, as in the BISC group on GitHub? I don't yeah. think I've, I've been added as a contributor. Okay. If um, I, I can send you my, my GitHub account. Yeah, the, the, if you if you send the, the GitHub account ID to to Chris, then he can add you, and then um, let let's talk on in the design channel together with Chris what kind of uh, permissions you guys will need so that yeah. you can create issues. Also, creating issues you can immediately on the repository, but um, for assigning people, this, uh, yeah, assigning people this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think you need some, you might not need maintainer rights, but uh, Chris knows best uh, what kind of permissions that are required for, to, for having, uh, handling that in a good way. I'm very new in GitHub. I never used GitHub uh, in a project like this, and especially doing, uh, uh, let's say, the design part of it. But yesterday, Chris uh, on the dev channel just gave me a walkthrough of uh, Creating my own for creating my branch, do my changes, uh, commit them, and do a pull request, and then uh, get them. So I don't know if Pedro is very familiar with, with GitHub, but uh, that, the tutorial, in a way that uh, Chris gave me in the Dev channel, is very helpful. If you are just mm -hmm. starting uh, from the from not knowing much of GitHub. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 quite powerful, also in the process. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely find, find uh, yeah, sorry. Peter, could you repeat that? Also, it was choppy from the audio on my side. Sorry, you guys, I barely hear it. Can you repeat that? I was saying that uh, I'm not very used to GitHub, but uh, Chris uh, gave me, is it Chris, Chris? The on what? Chris Beams. Yeah, on you, one, you, on, you gave on me like a tutorial on doing like a fork, uh, uh, doing changes, committing files, creating branches, and doing a pull request. And then he was a maintainer and he merged it. I don't know if you are very familiar with that. I was not. Uh, but there was a, on the dev channel, there's a huge thread where he gave me all the steps and I was following along. Uh, and that look, you can okay. just and, and look. I think he, he has a lot of information. He also um, teach me how to install the GitHub, uh, you know, and just a, another extension in a way, Hub, uh, that is very powerful for the command yeah. line. So yeah, it's very helpful. I can link you to the to the thread. Uh, Great, thank you. Have a look. Yeah. 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 Worst case uh, scenario that um, I I am maintainer or so or someone else story so I would then just merge the pull request and change it as, as quickly as possible and um, yeah if, if if that doesn't work then we, have, we can find another solution but I, I think that everyone can work on the sketch files on, on lo locally as soon as there is something that is um, worth to be shared then you you push it to your yeah. you, you push it and then everyone has, has access to it anyways so the, yeah, for yeah. now, for Sounds now, I'll probably keep it that way. And I don't know, we, do we have access to, is it helpful to have an InVision? I don't even know, does Sketch now allow 
any kind of preview? Do we need a preview? Do we just export PDFs, PNGs? What is the best way to share the actual work without having people uh, turn on their sketch app? I used, uh, and I shared with uh, Christoph and Chris, uh, uh, Zeppelin, which is similar to InVision. Uh, it's free as well for one project, so we are safe there. Um, so it just give, it's a preview, it gives you all the CSS uh, details in case they they are useful or not. Uh, um, I can I think I invited you on on the on the Zeppelin. I, I don't know if I have the right email though. Uh, my Gmail account. Yeah, but I I can give you the link and we can have a look and see if this works. If this works, we can use it, or else we can just try Envision as well. Okay. I'm not very familiar with Zeppelin, actually. So. Mm. I'll, I'll give you the link and uh, I'll show it to you. Zeppelin allows UI design? Yeah, it's like it, it gives you an, like a representation of the UI. Uh, and then you can go over the elements and it will give you the CSS for it. So it's not like a static image. It also has like the, the SVGs in a way. Uh, you can have annotations on it. Uh, I think it will tr it will track some changes as we progress with the design. I mean that that that's good. I think that's really good for for developing a design, but for for just like sketching and just doing quick iterations, uh, it makes it a little more complicated because it's so it's so like uh, properties based as opposed to just changing stuff visually. I know so, to, to do to do changes you do it in in Sketch uh, and then you just press a shortcut and you upload. Oh, got it, got it, got it, it, got it. it. It's just a, a tool to share uh, screens in a way with developers, uh, but it actually works as a preview as well if you want to share work with uh, the community. Okay. I'll take a look and see, but maybe maybe for now, uh, just to get stuff started and start getting some kind of visual work done, I'll just I'll just focus on working Sketch and maybe we can. Re yeah in the in yeah. the future sounds good. maybe you, you can just try out yeah yeah at the moment sketch would be absolutely fine as i also use sketch uh, personally and yeah we can always render some some png or so within the issue if if you want to give updates or get feedback yeah or there's also this uh, uh envision integration or any other there's, there's so many plugins available for Sketch where you can then easily publish a click prototype yeah. or something. Yeah, and we can also even keep it all all con uh, condensed into into GitHub. For instance, we can version the files and with which other which with every single pull request that we send with a new file, it sends along um, a folder with PNGs and assets. Yeah. So it's it's a, we can develop a, a folder structure. I to me I think just so I can keep working, I don't have a lot of time to to like take three hours to actually learn a new process. So I'm gonna try to use all my time I have available to, work to actually just designing, mm -hmm. and maybe someone else that's already familiar with the process can can maybe just that gap between the the previewing. But I was thinking about just every time I just upload. A new a new folder that has the source file for the sketch, the assets folder, and uh, the screens folder. I think that so everybody wants to. Yeah. Easier in a way. Yeah. I don't want to. I'm I'm just trying not to overly complicate. Even though I would love to learn a new process, uh, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe there's other priorities in my uh, on my I, side. I think I think that uh, works perfectly if we just get yeah, to Sketch files, uh, PNGs, and that's it. Yeah, for me. Let, let's take yeah. it to that way. So, so um, just that you know, um, I mentioned it briefly in the beginning. Uh, I might not be available starting anytime because I'm um, I'm becoming uh, I'm getting a, my wife is is pregnant at the moment. <laughs> yeah, congratulations! And the, and the birth date is on Friday. Also the not not the real, but the the, the calculated yeah. one. So I don't know. Yeah. The, um, mm -hmm. When I will when I will be offline, and then I will be offline for two weeks, and then I will start working again. But just that you to have everything to to continue working during that time, and afterwards, um, as the release is out there, uh, I would focus. Uh, I would just pick pick whatever issue is is um, ready 
to be implemented. I will, I will, if, if I have the, the visual uh, redesign of the components ready, I will try to make a, a quick skinning of it. Mm -hmm. And, and then we'll try out maybe um, a first pop-up uh, that is already uh, finalized in a, in a new design and we'll make it then step by step. Sounds okay. good. And when you are away, me and Pedro can coordinate on and try to keep things running. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, th thanks for your, for your time and your support and talk to you soon. Really yeah, looking forward to the... Yeah, let's talk soon. Changes. I like them a lot. Yeah. Hope everything goes great with your, with your newborn. Congratulations. Yeah, Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Bye. See you guys. Thanks.